Hey guys, I've tested a lot of LED grow lights over the years, hundreds in fact, and I'm still surprised by the fact that uh, receive grow lights in here for testing and they don't have optimal hanging heights listed on their channel and some don't even have power maps uh, showing the power distribution of the light in its specified area. Now, I'm, my own view, I think you probably shouldn't be considering those lights in the first place because they're not publishing helpful, useful, basic data to, um, to enable you to know how the light performs and also how to set it up for optimal performance when you get it home and into your grow tent. However, if you have a grow light, and you are confused or not sure about the optimum hanging height, this is a guide for you to show you how to set it up to get maximum yield from your grow light. That is get the light down low enough to get as much light as possible, but not too low that you, um, you're going to give the, the plants uh, any damage or any stress from too high light intensity. And this is a trade-off and in most cases, there's no perfect solution. Your, your canopy isn't perfectly flat. You're measuring from the underside of the light to the top of the canopy. In, in most cases, it's not going to be perfectly even. So you're really just trying to um, put it in that range where, as I said, it's delivering as much light as possible and uh, giving you a nice uniform spread as well. So in simple terms, the further you drop it down, the less light is being reflected off the side walls uh, and when it is reflected off the side walls most of it reflects back but not all of it uh, and you get a lot of light bouncing around and they're called reflectance losses so the lower you get the light onto the plant canopy less reflectance losses the more efficient your lighting system is the more light is going to reach that plant canopy and um, deliver growth increase in yield etc bringing it down too low and you will generally get what's called a hot spot or a high intensity point in the center. Um, but also, if your light is down low, it may not spread that light out to the edges. So the plants around the edges of the grow tent will not receive um, enough light really to be, to be optimized uh, to get the most out of each of those plants. And if you know the optimum hang height, either from the manufacturer's recommendations or from tests you've done yourself, then you need to maintain that height throughout the grow. So as the plants uh, get higher, get taller, that you maintain, so you raise that light up. You probably need to be doing the adjustments you know, once a week, maybe twice a week, depending on the rate of growth of your plants. Just as I said, to maintain that distance, probably raising it up a little bit higher than optimum so that the plants will grow up into that optimum height. And um, you, know, you don't come back a, a a week or four or five days later and it's grown right up into the light fixture then what you do for different stages of growth is use the dimmer so most grow lights now led grow lights these days have dimming and you would adjust that dimmer in accordance with the stages of the um, stages of growth and you want to push that that power intensity up as high as you can as quickly as you can again to push that plant as hard as you can to get the most uh, growth and the most yield in the end generally i would say seedlings very young plants up to maybe two or three weeks would be at maybe 20 to 30 percent in terms of the dimmer range but as you go through veg you want to be pushing that up to be getting up to 100 percent even before the end of veg with even with that long, long light cycle for veg, I would suggest getting it as high as you can. Now, in simple terms, if you do see some light stress, um, that would be, you know, sort of a, it's very unlikely you're gonna get light bleaching for a start unless it's really, really close to the, uh, the LED light. So within sort of six inches or 15 centimeters, you really have to be really close, particularly with the LED bar type lights, which are spread very wide. So it's not a very concentrated source. Um, but you may see some signs of light stress. Often it can be confused as well uh, with other factors. Uh, it's generally the plants are able to take really high light intensity. Most lights are recommended now for between say 800 micromoles and 1200 micromoles at the very high end of par. Uh, just for, for perspective, if the plants are outdoors, 
and certainly any time through, um, through late spring, summer and early autumn, they'd be receiving 2000 micromoles during midday. So the plants are well able to take that light intensity um, even over a long period of time. They really have the capacity to absorb an enormous amount of light in comparison to other plants. I'll just give you a bit of perspective on how uh, different lights have performed that I've tested. Got a few charts here separated by the size of grow area of all the sort of up-to-date lights that I've tested in the last couple of years. All ones available on the market today. And you can see the range is mostly in that 12, inch to, 12 inches to 18 inches hanging height range. And um, that's 30 to 45 centimeters. Some are slight are outliers to that. Uh, mostly that would be the panel lights. So that's the square board type which tend to concentrate the light um, underneath. Uh, and also they're not as physically big, so they have to be usually raised a little bit higher just to get that spread and prevent that hot spot underneath. Or if you're running a very high powered light in a relatively small space, you may need to raise it up just a little bit again so you don't get that really high power intensity in the center and you spread it out the edges as best as possible. And if you don't have a power map from the manufacturer for your light, or there's no other data out there, giving you the optimum recommended hanging height for the light. There's a couple of other ways you can do it. First of all, simply as trial and error. So just bring the light down. Um, I've started at about 30 centimeters or 12 inches. R just run it for a day, come back in and see is there any signs of light stress or problems with the plants. It's unlikely that you're going to see it. Um, what you may not be able to see is if the light is not spreading to the edges. Um, you won't be able to tell uh, for quite some time. And you'll see different signs of different rates of growth on the plants, say, for example, in the center around the edges. The other way is to use a meter to test how much power is, um, is that plant canopy level. And you can do that in a number of different ways. I have here uh, a lux meter. So you can use a lux meter like the unit T. I'll put the links down below. You can use this and convert the lux reading for your um, in your area to par or you can use a quantum sensor. So really good value for one money, really good value for money one here, the spot on by Inquest, And this will give you very, very accurate par readings. And what you're trying to do with that is, first of all, I'd look in the center point. So raise it, uh, drop the light down, take a measurement, for example, 30 centimeters or 12 inches underneath in the center. That's where the intensity is going to be highest generally. And target to get it down for a high intensity operation down below about 12 or 13 mic 100 micromoles. For the regular sort of home grower setup, you're targeting getting it under a thousand micromoles in the center. That means you've dropped it down until you've got that. Um, you're, you're not creating a hot spot basically. And then if you want to be really sophisticated is divide your grow up area up into a grid and take multiple measurements across that grid so you can generate your own power map. Again, there's a link below to a video I have done on that in the past. So I hope this helps really advantageous to optimize that grow light. You know, you can get up to 10% more light just by, by getting that light down as low as possible um, over your grow area to that optimum point and that will convert into yield. So it's worth spending a little bit of time on doing your research and maybe doing even a little bit of testing and buying a little bit of kit to find out, particularly if you're running a large grow up because it can make a big difference, you know. So as usual, any questions or comments, please leave them below. Delighted to, uh, to hear what you have to say and I'll get back to, them, to as many of them as possible. Take care.